Okay, <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about Hyperback. And Hyperback is a new SQL utility uh, for uh, backing up SQL, for compressing and encrypting uh, SQL server backups. Now, <clears throat> this, the, the product itself is new, but the guys have been around for a long time. Uh, the guys that are involved in this project are the same ones that were involved in the original Lightspeed project. Um, and this was before it was Quest and during while it was MCTA and whatnot, right? So, <clears throat> uh, ordinarily, I wouldn't really go into a third-party vendor product like this, but this one's got a really, really cool feature that uh, I think you guys are really going to be interested in. Now, let me show you the, uh, the interface here real quick. It's just very simple. This is all there is to it, really. Um, there's a couple more small programs for extracting files and whatnot. But, you know, if you look at this, th this is basically a, a, a driver-based backup, unlike, you know, Lightspeed and Idera and uh, Redgate, who are all, um, you know, who are all EXEs that use uh, extended stored procedures in the database to do their dirty work. Uh, with this guy, you, you specify the, either the file location or the uh, extension, or both, and then it compresses it at the drive level instead of at the database level. So you don't really have to, um, you don't really have to change your your SQL your backup syntax at all, actually. Um, but what I'm getting at here is there's a really really cool feature because you notice, let's say I've got HBC here, right? So I'll modify this. It tells me that you know modifying it could be dangerous. Yeah, sure. Um, that I've got to include all paths, local and remote. And the file extension is star.hbc, so that's uh, their format. And it could be anything. I mean, I could. You see here, I've registered .back, and they've got HBE and HBC2. But I could also do I could also do .zip or whatnot, right? So one of the really cool things about this, let's go ahead and close that. And as being at the driver level, you get oh a fringe benefit, right? So let's take. Uh, this BCP, oh, this minus U minus P, and then native format. So, you know, if you don't know BCP, BCP syntax, I've got a, a couple videos on that that'll teach it to you uh, from ground zero. So, you know, if, if you don't understand what I'm doing here, then go ahead and, and watch those videos. But right now, I'll go ahead and assume that you know what's going on. Oh, actually, ha. Okay, here. It'd help if I gave it a location, wouldn't it? Backslash. Okay, so that's address uncompressed dot text. And uh, this file actually has like six million and change, and it's going from across the network. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and I'll uh, I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, we're back now, and you can see here that it finished in one seventy six seven one nine uh, with an average of thirty four seven seven six point eleven rows per second. Okay, that's not too bad. And I brought up this other thing here. Uh, now, where are you? There you are. Should be able to go here and go. I'll go ahead and do HBC because that's what I've got registered, right? And go ahead and hit enter. And again, I'm going to pause it and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, we're finished here. And if you guys bothered recording it, if you guys didn't bother recording it, I did. Uh, the last uh, clock time was 176719, and we're here at 211. And then uh, we processed 29,000 rows per second, and before we got 34. So, yeah, the compression has a little tiny bit of overhead, but, you know, really not enough to worry about, right? I mean, that's just, that's pretty negligible. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, from a process perspective, this is just really, really cool because everybody has seen that dreaded BCP process, right? Where, you know, you do it in and out of SQL and, um, you know, you have to use a VB script because, uh, 
you know, you, you're going to send it over the wire to another server or to an external customer and, um, you know, you have to gzip it first or you have to, or you have to buy winzip to, to use the command line version. And, you know, so you've got your process that does like a command shell with a gzip or a winzip and that's after it, and that's after it already, uh, um, after you BCP the file out. So, you know, you have to BCP the file then you have to compress the file, then you send the file, then on the other side they have to decompress the file and then, and then uh, load the file back in. And of course now you've got two copies of the file out there, right? Because you've got one, one compressed and one uncompressed, and then you usually delete the uncompressed file, and it's just kind of a pain. Well, look at this. This does the same thing in a single step, right? Because if I come here and look at the difference in the sizes, right? That's the uncompressed, and that's the compressed, right? In the neighborhood of half. Um, <clears throat> so that is, that is just really, really cool. Now, also, from that same perspective, if I were to do this, where is it? Okay, there it is. Okay. So if I were to do this from the HBC, <clears throat> you notice how I am able to BCP in the data from the compressed file, so I don't have to decompress it anymore. So I've I've taken a, a thing, I've taken a process from like five steps down to one, and that's really pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and uh, I'll be back in a minute as soon as it's done. Okay, so we're back now, and it just finished. And you know, I just proved to you that I can uh, that I can import with a BCP at a command line, right? With a hyperback, um, with a hyperback compressed file. So hyperback will it, it sits at the disk level, right? So <clears throat> it will compress data as it comes in. It will decompress data as it comes out. And your processes don't know the difference. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, when you BCP, you usually send to an external company or to an external group, and uh, you know they don't have budget or they're not going to buy Hyperback just so they can decompress the files from your process. Um, you know, and, and and I believe that you shouldn't ever you know set up a process that relies on somebody having the same the same software you do unless it's free, right? Something like Gzip or Winzip. I mean, that's pretty industry standard, so you can. And, and it, you know, you know, compression is being built into Windows now anyway. So you know, they could, you know, they could easily write something to decompress these things. Um, but something like Hyperback is is you know very specialized, and it may be going to a file server instead of on a SQL box anyway, right? So, <clears throat> you know, I can see where it would be a concern for most of you that you know Hyperback is such a specialized uh, application. But that really isn't much of a concern because if you notice, if you come in here, I go back to the extensions and I see HBC. If I modify that again, I get my warning. Uh, if I come over here to compression, see, I can enable zip compatible output format. So what that means is, you know, I can do this and it will, I can use Hyperback on my end automatically and have it automatically put it to a uh, to a zip compatible file format and then on the other side they can use winzip to unzip it so hyperback doesn't lock you into using to using its its own compression algorithms period i mean you can do you know you can do native hyperback or you can do you know winzip compatible and that is just excellent cuz you can zip up anything right i mean even if they're not files like that you can zip up you know, hell, I would imagine you could zip up Word docs and text files and and so on and so on, right? I mean, anything that can be zipped can be put in here and you can take the, the zip right out of the process. So anyway, I thought this was really cool and I wanted to show you guys. So uh, I hope somebody finds this useful and uh, it works excellent with your SQL backups as well. As a matter of fact, um, I was playing with this last night and I'm getting a little bit better compression on all of my databases than I am with Lightspeed. So Hyperback's good stuff.